Learning the most from him is always putting, you know, my family first and the love of my family and knowing that, okay, when I go home to rest after I miss her, I got my family with me. He's someone that was always the same yeah. in the pulpit and out of the pulpit. But in that moment, I'm like, wow, like, the love my grandpa has for me, the love my grandpa has for other people, like, that's true God love. Like, yeah. that's the love of God right there coming out of him. What I saw from the, just the genuine life of Dr. Savell, I knew that that message was real for him because I saw it. Right. And so, honestly, like, my life has been for ever changed by his message. Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you were here today. We are continuing our legacy series honoring the life of Dr. Seville. We have some really special guests today. We have Dylan and Abby Everidge. How are y'all yes. today? Doing good. good. Yes. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah. We're Again. so excited. Again. Again. Yes. 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 <laughs> you were on the first season. Yes. And we had a really great conversation. So good, yeah. And yes. so we're but now the people get to see your faces. I know. Yes. Right? We were. This is what oh, we look yeah, like. We were, that we were was audio. Yeah. 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 It was Amazing. Re- it was really great. It's great to have you all back. Thank I know we get you. to see you guys week in and week out, mm-hmm. but it's nice to have you at the table today. Mm-hmm. Kind of talk about your life with Dr. Seville and what that yeah. was like. And um, I know yeah. Dylan, he was your papa. Is that what you call him? Yes, papa. Papa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or so, pop. Pop. Or pop. pop. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's awesome. What was it like growing up with him? Man, it was definitely one of the best relationships I've had as an example of a man, a husband, a father, a grandfather, but um, knowing that I could always rely on my papa, that uh, when I would see him, it was always a joyous time. It wasn't like a, you know, um, something that I would, I would look forward to every single time. Like I get to see my pop, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, there's just so many things of who he is as a person that I could say that you know, his his humor is probably mm. one of the things that yeah. <laughs> we would always, you know, have a good time with because he's very quick-witted. Mm. He's a very quick-witted person. And uh, little things he would do with us, like I remember one time he would, when I was younger, when we would have, you know, a snack or a dessert or a drink, he would always, you know, grab it and say, let me see if it's good for you first. Like, <laughs> let me taste, let me taste <laughs> it and so see if funny. it's good for you. So just like little grandpa things that he was very nourishing and very, you know, wanted us to have a good time or, you know, if we would go to the lake house, he would, you know, make sure we're, you know, getting to go on the boat or on the tube or on the jet skis and all that. But just uh, growing up with him was probably, you know, one of the best times to in my life, I would say. Yeah. That's awesome. He sounds mm-hmm. like just a grandpa that loved yes. his yeah. kids. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And your fifth, fifth grandkid? Yes, fifth grandkid. Yes. You're like right in the middle there. Right, right. in the middle, yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. And then Abby, it wasn't too long ago. You guys have only been married a couple years, right? Yeah. yeah. Two years. Um what was it like becoming part of that family? Yeah, so I met Dr. Savell six years ago and it was just like Dylan said, he always wanted his grandkids to have a good time. And the first he was the first family member I met out of Dylan's whole family. Mm-hmm. And it was him and Miss Carolyn down at the dock of their house. And we went down there and they just welcomed me in. Just, it was so normal. There was yeah. nothing like, it was, it didn't feel like an introduction. It just felt like I'd always known him and he'd always known me. And it was just like, oh, okay. This is just. Did you know about JSMI or the Savelles before? No, no. Not. So you were not like, at you all. weren't into, you had no. Nothing. I just knew that he was Dylan's grandpa. I yeah. was like, hey. That's sweet. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Sweet. My grandpa's an evangelist. He yeah. travels around and nothing like, <clears throat> yeah. she didn't grow up and wear the face. So, yeah. so she didn't know, you know, the yeah. man he was, like the <laughs> mm-hmm. the, no, the prophet of God, you know what I mean? He just knew, <laughs> yeah. oh, it's just Dylan's grandpa. Yeah. yeah. And he was amazing. He was, I think when I first saw him, he was filling up jet skis with gas and like getting it ready for us to go ride. I've never ridden <laughs> one. It was like, a, I was like so excited. Um, but that was the first impression did I had of him. Did he ride a jet ski? I, not that day, but you I'm know. sure he did. I've jet skis before. <laughs> These are the things like we don't right? see, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, could you imagine? Like driving, yeah. he, was, oh, he was always driving the boat. He was always oh, yeah. getting us mm-hmm. on the tube and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. amazing. Mm-hmm. So that was my first impression of him was just like, oh, he's really cool. He's really nice. 
he's just Dylan's grandpa. And ever since then, I've he's always been smiling. Like every memory I have of him is just him being happy. Like I've yes. never seen him complain or be upset about, you know, like every yeah. memory I have just being like an almost like an outside point of view, seeing them like have their like be that's their grandfather. Mm -hmm. But for me, just seeing like their interactions, I'm like, he just loves his life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like mm -hmm. he just has a good time. You can just see it on his face, like no matter what we're doing. So, yeah. I mean, it was normal being grafted in. It was just, he welcomed me. He called me one of his grandkids when we got married. And just like, it was just the most normal. Never felt weird. Never yeah. felt like- Intimidated. I, yeah, or and never, like that. yeah, it was just, he just welcomed me in, yeah. and I loved it. It was great. He was such a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, what a nice guy. Yeah, thinking of all the things that you learned from him, thinking in the, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, he was a titan of faith. He was yes. one of the giants, um, not only in our house but just around the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what did he in, in kind of instill in you that you will take with you moving forward? There's a lot. I mean, you know, there's not just you know, faith lessons, but life lessons too. I remember when I got married to Abby, one of the first things he told me, I said, Pop, what's some advice I can get? And he's like, the most uh, used line you should use in your marriage is, yes, dear. <laughs> yes, dear. Nice. Yes, dear. I'm working on it. I'm still trying to get the yes, dear, but uh, he, uh, he always taught yes, dear. And I even, uh, you know, when... I saw his relationship with Miss Carolyn. I got the opportunity yeah. to live with them for a couple months during COVID. And they had the most genuine, sweet relationship that any couple could yeah. ever have. Mm -hmm. And seeing, and one thing a lot of people don't really, he picks on her a lot. <laughs> and it's, it's that flirting picking on yeah. like, you know, little kids do. And he <laughs> right. would always, he would always like pick on her a little bit. He like tapped me on the shoulder, like, watch this, watch this. And then he would say like a line to her and she'd go up and <laughs> smack him or something like that. And uh, it was just so sweet to see that relationship and, I mean, one of the things is being a good husband, a faithful husband, mm -hmm. and, you know, and knowing that my wife is more important than ministry. My wife is more important than yeah. the, the thing I'm doing besides the Lord, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, the thing with me is seeing that relationship he had with my grandma and the love that they had for each other. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, life lesson wise, I mean, that is a faith lesson for yeah, a for lot sure. of people. Mm -hmm. You have to have the Holy Spirit and you have to have the Lord to be a good and faithful husband. But just the way he honored my grandma and the way that he, you know, treated her as, you know, one. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they were one together. Yeah. And, you know, he had no other love in his life that he would say, man, this is Miss, uh, to me, you know, Miss Carolyn. You know, he would say, that's that's my love. That's my, she would call him Jay and he would call her C. And, you know, just to see that love growing up, even if I, you know, the things I've gone through growing up, you know, I didn't get to see that a lot. But seeing that, okay, like that's true love right there. That's, yeah, that's the example great. I get mm -hmm. to go after. I'm glad yeah. that y'all got to like experience <clears throat> them like as a new couple. You know what I mean? Like you got yes. to have that yeah. example because I feel like, we don't have as many examples like well, that these days. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? Yeah. And so when you see couples who have been together for that long, like yes. I want to like, what is your secret? And that's so funny because we, Ryan asks a lot, like what's your secret mm -hmm. to long marriage? Mm -hmm. And the answer is pretty much always the same. Like yes. happy wife, happy, happy wife, wife. Yeah. which is great for us. Yeah. I mean, yes, that's dear. amazing. Yes. But, yeah, <laughs> But I, I'm glad that y'all got to see them and, as like a young couple mm -hmm. and have that example because yeah. that's yes. yeah it's just so important it is it really kind of helps set your foundation solid yes. at the beginning of your marriage yeah. and, yes, and walking into did. ministry especially the balance between your married life and your ministry life yeah yes like that's a that's something we see a lot of people across the span of ministry time struggle with yeah. like how mm -hmm. do you do how do you do both well, well? and that's what i love about dr savelle like he was when he was on somewhere he was on but when he's home like yes. he's home yeah. yeah you know and i think like that's 
that's the example for ministry life. Like yeah, I agree. Yes. straight up, like you, yeah. you can't be distracted by outside things. And obviously like things come mm-hmm. up and if you have to, you know, you have to do what you yeah. have to do. Ministry is like, a, it's a full-time job. It's a full-time thing, but being able to like dedicate your time to your family. Yes. Is mm-hmm. yes. Definitely. Number one. And yeah. you know, there was during COVID, you know, obviously he wasn't ministering as much. So, um, I got to see the, going back to the time I got to see him growing up is there was this one time with me and Madison when Madison was staying with us for a weekend and uh, me, uh, Miss Carolyn, Dr. Savelle and my sister Madison, we were all uh, watching a movie and we watched it. We started at like 10 o'clock at night. That's late for them. (laughs) That's late for me. (laughs) It's like eight or nine o'clock. They would always go to bed at that time. Yeah. We said, no, we'll watch the movie with you. So they watched the movie with us for two Two hour movie. Then at 12 o'clock, Miss Carolyn's like, I have a movie we can watch. And we're like, Mimi, it's 12 Girl. o'clock. She's like, and we're like, Pop, are you, do you want to watch this movie? He's like, yeah, let's do it. We stayed up till two in the morning watching movies. That's and that, awesome. Oh my you know, God. with yeah. me and my sister, we really like appreciate, like we talked the next morning, like our 70 year old grandparents <laughs> decided to stay up with us till two in the morning. But the, the love that they had for us, the knowing that this is probably one of the only times we could do something yeah, like that with right. them. Like looking back at that, I'm so appreciative that mm-hmm. I got to have yeah. mm-hmm. those moments with them during yeah. those three months. So yeah. I think uh, that's the thing that learning the most from him is always putting, you know, my family first and mm-hmm. the love of my family and knowing that, okay, when I go home to rest after I mess I got my family with me mm-hmm. and knowing that you know sorry um knowing that he's someone that was always the same yeah in the pulpit and out of the pulpit Mm -hmm. and the love that he had for us you know yeah and yeah sorry incredible what a what a legacy i think you know everybody would like to live a life that people could say that about them that they love their family well well i think that's what we do like that's our job is we lead by are we like take these these you know great big people who made such an influence and we take what they did and we apply it to us but we have we can do that now you know Mm -hmm. we can start Mm -hmm. like appreciating you know those moments now like don't wait until someone passes you know what i mean like do that now and keep that momentum going, you know, yes. like don't just the first couple months you're feeling like, oh, we need to love everybody. We need to, yeah, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. keep it going forever. Like, yes. don't forget that, like hold on to That's those good. little yes. things. You know what I mean? Cause it's yeah, easy exactly. to kind of let, let it fade out. And then you, mm-hmm. does that make yeah, sense? Does. And then yes. just yes. keep that going. Like now we can do it now. Yes. Tell people you love them now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you I know, know the Lord, you know, before he passed, I know the Lord orchestrated so many things, moments that I get yeah. got to have with him, yeah. you know, traveling with him. What an honor that I got to travel with him. And sometimes, you know, as a 19-year-old, you're kind of taking it for granted, you know what I yes. mean, mm-hmm. as an yeah. immature 19-year-old. But, you know, the last time I got to travel with him, he, he really opened up to me about some things that, you know, uh, with the past history of our family, like the Anish tree and mm-hmm. stories behind that and other things that were going on. And we really had to have a, got to have a deep conversation. And I mean, we both cried together and it was like probably one of the most times I always look back like, man, I'm thank you, Lord, that I yeah. got to have that opportunity. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, he, and even, you know, a couple months before he passed, you know, me transitioning from the ministry to the church and that meeting that we had and, you know, he, uh, I remember we were talking about um, the relationship that he had with Brother Copeland. And, uh, you know, to see that the love that he had for him, he, he started crying during that meeting too. And I, I started crying mm-hmm. just because of the, yeah. the way that he loved people and, you know, the moment I got to have with him and that. Yeah. And those moments I cherish so much because it's like, like, did I know three months later he would pass away? No, I did no, not. Right. And yeah. but in that moment, I'm like, wow, like the love my grandpa has for me, the love my grandpa has for other people, like that's true God love. Like yeah. that's the love mm-hmm. of God right there coming out of him. And that's what I can take now. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. if he had that, 
for himself and he had that in his life i can do that in my life yeah. as well yeah. it makes yeah. you want to love people it makes you want to yes. do right. things exactly. for people yeah yes i right. appreciate the gift that they are yeah why they're there why they're with you yeah um when you look at your life and moving forward both of you in ministry um what are some of the things that you hope to emulate that he did in ministry but you talked about loving your family well mm -hmm. but thinking about those ministry lessons and, and the nuggets that he dropped how does that color your future Mm -hmm. in ministry i think first and foremost everything that he ever taught just in seeing his life like on a, as a front row seat like dylan had we will teach that to like our kids and their kids yes. and like everyone in our family down the line will know who dr jerry savelle is and was and i think one of the biggest things that i just admired so much about him was his genuineness yes. and like I remember when he met my parents, um, he just loved them. He just treated them with so much love and like just enjoyed meeting them. And it just blessed my heart because I was like, he just loves every single yeah. person. Like it doesn't yes. matter yeah. who you are, what you look like, where you've come from. He loves you. Like he will show you. And that was my, that's why it felt so normal when I was grafted into the family too, mm -hmm. because it was just like, he already loves everyone. Yeah. Like there's no one that he doesn't love. And yeah. so it was just, it's special seeing that, seeing him interact with just people as people and not as someone who's less than or someone who he doesn't know yet. It's like, right. he yeah. just invite, he's inviting. Mm -hmm. like you yeah. wanna be around that. Yeah, there was so many times traveling with him going off what Abby said of, you know, a person would just come up to him and wanna take a picture with him. He'd take a picture with every <laughs> single person. And, you know, some of the pastors would be like, no, 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 get away. And he, he'd say, no, no, it's fine. Like, yeah. let them come here. Let me talk to them. And because yeah. he was really, he was a man for the people. You know, he, he, the same compassion that Jesus had on the mountain when he looked at the people, Dr. Savelle had that too. Mm -hmm. And he saw the people and they, he mm -hmm. saw them without a shepherd. He saw them without the revelation that he had. And he just loved them so much that mm -hmm. he just wanted them to get, he had that compassion. And, yeah. um, yeah, so the thing that, you know, continuing in ministry for me wise and with Abby and continuing that legacy is I remember Pastor Justin telling me this, that when Dr. Seville passed away, that John Ben Dixon one time asked him what legacy was. And he said that it's a message and it's a vision. And to me, that's the same thing. It's not about who carries that. It's about all of us coming together mm -hmm. and continuing what he started. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he had a vision just like Abraham had a vision and he didn't get to see the full thing. Right. It's like Dr. Savelle had a vision and he created this for all of us mm -hmm. and for us to continue that message of faith, that word of faith that I am the righteousness of God. I, I am favor. I'm called mm -hmm. to battle on destiny. I'm made a winner mm -hmm. in life. And knowing those things, it it comforts all of us. Mm -hmm. It comforts me knowing that pop your cloud of witnesses looking up at me or down at me right now mm -hmm. knowing that okay i'm i'm running this battle yeah. i'm running mm -hmm. the race i'm yeah. going to continue this for you and for the lord and what you, what you started mm -hmm. so you know i'm excited for what's coming i yeah. know that yeah. there's so many things that he taught me in faith and all that and yeah. but yeah. uh i know that the lord has really put um a compassion on our family and I know the rest of the church and the ministry to yeah. all yeah. right let's we're not going to quit we're going to keep going yeah yeah it really does feel like there's like a second wind that's yes. come in yeah. like there was obviously like a time of processing and and mourning like that's yes. biblical you know yeah. to take the time to honor the honor his life I feel like a second wind has come in mm -hmm. and people are like okay like we're going to carry this vision forward like mm -hmm. if it stops with with him and only what he did then mm -hmm. the legacy kind of ends, but there's such momentum yeah. to continue the work that the yes. Lord established on the earth through Dr. Seville. And you guys yeah. get to be front row, front and center for it. So mm -hmm. yes. yeah. what is that? What are you seeing or hearing for the future for, for you? For me, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I really know the Lord has, even before, you know, Dr. Seville passed away is I told him, you know, last year during uh, kids camp, I felt like the Lord was telling me dedicate the next 10 years of my life to youth ministry. And, you know, I'd, uh, the funny thing is, is when I had that meeting with him before um, he passed away, you know, you know, my, you know, my aunt, she's always big on growth and vision. And, yeah. you know, I was like, I was like, all right, I'm going to ask him what his growth plan is for me. So I was like, I was like, pop, 
what's your five year growth plan for me? He's like, I don't, I don't have one for you. What's yours? And he's because he's like, you have to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I, you know, he's he's still human and he doesn't have all the answers. And he was basically telling me, like, that's for you and the Lord to figure out. But right. me seeing yeah. him as my papa and all that, right. it's like you're you're all knowing. <laughs> you don't have here's, the answer. Here's right. God and then here's you, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like you know you're the guy who's right. supposed to know all these things. So he just said, I don't have it for you. And, you know, that's for you to figure out yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the Lord has put things on your heart, write it down. Mm -hmm. Write the vision. Make it plain yeah. yourself. And, uh, you know, there's things that the Lord has put on my heart for youth ministry. And there's things that uh, the Lord has put on Abby's heart for things that she wants to do. Mm -hmm. And she can go into that further. But, uh, you know, that the Lord has really just pressed upon me to continue what Dr. Phil started just by carrying that message through the youth ministry for the next 10 years and that's really something that i'm really looking forward to i mean it's yeah. now i mean i love mm -hmm. spending time with our youth and yeah. you know getting to develop them and a big thing yeah. we love doing is developing people and mm -hmm. you know developing molding them into the winners that they are that god created them to be so that's a big thing for me right now yeah i think for me my biggest revelation of faith is that you can take the Bible for what it says. And that's yeah. like the highest form of reality. And I learned that from Dr. Savell. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I didn't know the word of faith before I met Dylan. I grew up Baptist, so I knew the word and I knew God, but it became something different when I really put it into practice, which yeah. is what Dr. Savell teaches is take God's promise for what it says, like believe in it. Mm -hmm. And I remember someone asked me once, what is word of faith? Like, what do they believe in? What is that? And I didn't know how to explain it, but what I did say was, it's like they read the Bible and they actually believe it. And yeah. cause that's what I, that was yeah. my first impression. I was like, dang, like they believe that they're gonna get healed and they like they have this faith. And that was also what I saw from the, just the genuine life of Dr. Savell. I knew that that message was real for him mm -hmm. because I saw it. Right. And so, Honestly, like my life has been forever changed by his yes. message and mm -hmm. continues to be changed by his message. And just the influence that I see on Dylan, like Dylan has so much faith. Like he has the gift of faith. Like I see it in him and it's like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is crazy. I can actually like <laughs> believe in the Bible and not just like my idea of it or, right. you know, right. there's just been so yeah. much growth yes. ever right. since seeing his life. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> that's wow. really cool I love it and so you know I've ever since getting married knowing Dr. Savelle I've been very aware of like God's favor on my life yeah. when I wasn't before and I have just been like overwhelmed with like noticing his blessings on my life and like even this past week like I'm it's every day and I just like I feel God's love and it kind of like because because of how I grew up, I'm kind of like, oh, that doesn't really make sense. Like, like, why does he why does he love me so much? Because I always thought he was enough, but yeah. God's more than enough. And I think that like the overflow, the abundant overflow of like having a relationship with God is what I learned from Dr. Savelle mm -hmm. is like you don't just get filled up, you get mm -hmm. overflowed mm -hmm. like you get more than enough. And that has been like my biggest revelation that I'm still like processing and like it's just wow like i love what you it. said about favor like noticing mm -hmm. his favor because it's all around us but yeah. we don't always notice it yeah. yes. like that's something that i'm like trying to teach addy mm -hmm. and like what we're you know talking to her about is the favor of god is everywhere yes. Yes. it's not but we are your eyes open are you yeah. paying attention to it like yeah. are you noticing it like i got here in one piece that's the favor of god like mm -hmm. i you know was able to eat three meals yes. today that's the favor of god yes. like right. we can pay our bills that's the favor of god. you yes. know what i mean like noticing it mm -hmm. everywhere is yeah. cute and also in the big things like you know i don't yeah. know like someone handed me a check like yeah. what right. whoa right. like a favor but that's not yeah. always what it looks it's, like yeah. it's all around us but noticing yes. that is where it starts and that'll keep it coming and that yeah. will that will increase your appreciation of who yes. God is exactly. and what, how much yes. he loves you. Yeah. That's really yes. good. That's mm -hmm. really good. Kind of leads into 
the question that ties all of this together. <laughs> and it's what Dr. Savelle lived for, which is mm-hmm. making winners in life. Yes. Yeah. So just, I know you guys gave an answer the first time you were yeah. on season one, but that's been yes. a year ago. <laughs> yes. So, so we want to ask you again, like, what does it mean to make winners in life? You want to go first? Sure. <laughs> um, I think last yes, time. Dear. Yes, <laughs> yes, dear. Yes, dear. Last time I talked about, um, you know, if God is for me, who can be against me? And that if God's a winner, that makes me a winner. And I still truly believe that. And obviously that's biblical revelation. But I feel like the verse that came up to me was what we talked about in first things first is seek first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when you just have that deep, genuine relationship with the Lord, when you're putting him first things first and you just have that genuine love for people like Dr. Savo have, that genuine love for the Lord that Dr. Savo had, that all those things are going to be added unto you, and that's going to make you a winner in every single area of your life. All these things will be added unto you, whether yeah. that's your job, your career, your family, your, uh, your finances, your health, all the things will be added unto you, and that makes you the winner in life that God wants you to be, and that Dr. Savo was. Yeah. I think my answer goes back to what I just said about just feeling the overflow of God's abundance and God's love. And it comes from like what you said, Andy, about you have a more of an appreciation for who God is. Mm -hmm. I think that having that intimacy with him, having that time set apart every day for him, getting that daily bread from him creates that intimacy and then results in that appreciation for him. And I think honestly, intimacy with God is what makes me feel like a winner in life. Just like having that time set apart every single day that increases my knowledge of him, my appreciation of him and that it keeps me going and it makes me want more every single day. So it just grows and grows and grows. And that's turning into what is the overflow, the abundant overflow of being a daughter of Christ and just loving life because it's, we're made to love life. Yeah. Yeah. We're not made to hate it and feel pain and feel sorrow and be sad. Like, that's a big revelation that I've had is like, I can enjoy my life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, that's so fun. (laughs) Like that's, I'm allowed to. Yes. Yes. Be happy. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's very good. Just like Dr. Seville did. Yeah. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Yes. 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 Oh, I love that. (laughs) Thank you all for being here. Yeah. For being part of this series. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. You're great. I got to come back. Maybe we'll have you again. I hope. With the third Maybe, making yeah. winners in life question. Yeah. Third. <laughs> third. I'll for Round now. three. Yes. Yeah, well, you're, you're season regulars, so you're yeah. in season one, season Perfect. two, and then come back for season Maybe three. Maybe season three. Yeah. And y'all come back for season three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us this week. We are still in the middle of our legacy series, so go back and watch anything that you missed and stay tuned because we have a lot more conversations coming up. Really and ones. you can catch us on YouTube, Instagram, all the things, all the Twitters. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Tune in next Friday for more winning conversations.